Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on Category Tactics and Analytics. The Category Tactics, or 4 Ps, include Product Placement, Pricing, and Promotion. Each tactic influences volume and share within a brand or category and are the key drivers. They need to be monitored and analyzed in order to understand how they impact volume growth or decline within a brand or category. Here are the learning objectives for the full course. We will not be covering all of the objectives in this course preview, but will give you some examples of the valuable materials that are included in the course. Let's get started. The category management process consists of the following four steps. Step 1. Retailer strategy. Step 2. Develop category plans. Step 3. Implement category plans. And Step 4. Review category performance. Category assessment fits under the second step of the category management process. Develop category plans. Understanding how category tactics are driving the results is a pivotal part of the category assessment. Before we get into details about the tactics, you should consider the demographics of the target consumer and shopper. Different demographic profiles are influenced differently by media, price, and retailer strategies and shoppers in these demographic profiles focus on different priorities in their shopping experiences. There are many different consumer profiles based on age, race, geography, household income, education levels, household size, and so on. These different demographics also mean different shopping patterns and different needs for each of these consumer groups. The first level of influence is by the vendor, through the delivery of company, brand, or different marketing promotional tools that include direct mail, events, sponsorships, new products, sampling, webpages, mail and online advertising, social media, loyalty programs, and TV, radio print ads, and outdoor billboards. The next level of influence is by the retailer through the tactics or the four Ps. These include placement, price, promotion, and product. No matter how successful a vendor's marketing program is, their results will be limited without the support of retailers. Success is driven by the category management tactics. And because more than 50% of a shopper's decisions are made in the store, we know that in-store merchandising and store layout have a profound impact on category and brand or segment results. In addition, retailers influence shoppers' decisions online. According to the Food Marketing Institute, in the U.S., more than half of consumers purchase groceries online, at least occasionally. But something is happening in the retail industry that's changing all of the rules, changing the ways that retailers and vendors need to think about how they market and sell to the consumer. Consumers have more access to information than ever before, and with the accelerating adoption of mobile, Digital commerce is poised to explode, bringing shopping into the palms of consumers' hands around the world. E-commerce continues to grow at an impressive rate around the world. It started with companies like Amazon and online sales-only retailers. But now, vendors have also started selling online, as have brick-and-mortar retailers. It's taken a long time for some brick-and-mortar retailers to finally get on board the online game, and they've lost billions of dollars to retailers who have had a lot more experience in this new approach to retailing. Omni-channel retailing is very similar to, and an evolution of, multi-channel retailing. 
The biggest difference is that it's concentrated more on a seamless approach to the consumer experience through all available shopping channels like mobile internet devices, computers, bricks and mortar, television, catalog, and so on. In Net, the omnichannel consumer wants to use all channels simultaneously, and retailers using an omnichannel approach need to track them across all channels. As online shopping continues to grow, a keen understanding of the tactics and their relevance across channels is critical. When we consider the retail environment, we need to take into account both the online and offline retail channels. Brick and mortar retail stores are part of the offline retail channel, which still accounts for over 90% of total retail sales in North America. The online retail sales have experienced phenomenal growth in the recent years due to the proliferating use of smartphones and tablets, coupled with investments in online sales division made by retailers. According to Forrester Research, online retail sales in the U.S. are expected to represent 10% of total retail sales by 2017 and outpace the sales growth of brick-and-mortar stores over the next five years. Development in online sales has a direct impact on a retailer's tactics. For example, direct mail and newspaper circulars are playing a diminished role in retail marketing. Mass advertising will not disappear overnight, but its influence is certainly warning. There are increased assortment offerings in the online space, and shelf space becomes the online store. Pricing also becomes transparent. The result? These trends will put considerable strain on the traditional retailer's economic model, with challenges to both the top and bottom lines. Gross margins will come under pressure from price transparency. Retailers will need to have the same pricing in-store as online to remain competitive. There will be a reduced share of trade spending from vendors. It makes sense that as there is an increased focus in the digital arena, Vendors will allocate fewer trade dollars to secure shelf space and run in-store promotions. Both retailers and vendors need to become more strategic in their online approach and continue to evolve their strategy in this space as they start to better understand the omni-channel consumer. In summary, there are many factors that influence a consumer's purchase decision, driven by both the retailer and vendor. 50% of shopper decisions are made prior to the shopping trip, and 50% are made while in the store. In this course, we will focus on the tactics and understand how they can influence consumer purchase decisions. Each of the tactics influences volume and share within a category. They are the key drivers that need to be monitored in order to understand how they impact volume growth or decline within a category. Some tactics may have a bigger influence in one category over another. We're going to review each tactic in more detail, including their key measures and some basic analytics. We'll start with product assortment. Here are some basic things to know about product assortment. A retailer's total product offering is called a merchandise mix or product range. If a product is available for purchase, it's often referred to as in distribution. Distribution or product availability is the most important tactic. If a product is not available for sale in the store, it simply will not sell. And finally, the lowest level of detail in a retailer's assortment is the item level or SKU level, which stands for Stock Keeping Unit. Based on these format differences, as well as the different target consumers, retailers will have different strategies when it comes to assortment. Some may be trying to carry the widest assortment available. They may have target market coverage objectives to measure what percentage of the total market sales their items represent. Others may have strategies focused on private label, 
or a focus on large or club pack sizes. Some retailers may focus on a premium assortment lineup that targets a higher income consumer, while others may focus on less expensive items targeted to low income consumers. Another strategy may be to be the first to market on new product launches to increase excitement in the stores. Vendors need to understand each retailer's unique strategies to make recommendations that consider and align with their overall assortment strategies. A one size fits all approach is not going to work, but if a retailer doesn't share their overall assortment strategies with vendors, it makes it difficult for the vendors to complete analytics that match with the retailer's rules and principles as they relate to assortment. Retailers also need to focus on their online product assortment strategy. They have been increasing their online product assortment to capitalize on the growth of e commerce and to catch up with online retailers like Amazon. Let's look at Walmart as an example. In 2015, they're selling more than 5 million SKUs, but this compares to 232 million SKUs at Amazon. And it compares to 150,000 SKUs that Walmart sells in its average supercenter. In net, product assortment strategy online has to be done in line with the retailer's overall strategy in order to deliver positive results. Retailers need to develop an omni channel assortment strategy that will allow them to win in both physical and digital retail. Now that you have an understanding of overall product assortment strategies, it's time to understand the key measures. There are many different ways to measure product assortment, including share per SKU, number of listings, share of listings, percent of ACV distribution, percent of stores carrying the product, and sales per point of distribution. The first two measures give you a top line brand and segment perspective, while the bottom three measures relate to item level assortment analysis. Scanned sales data is where most of the measures are available. In store audits and planograms may be other sources for product assortment information. We've now given you a glimpse of our certified course on category tactics and analytics. Which will help your organization turn data insights into action through the category tactics, another way to improve return on data investment. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state of the art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000, or a live session at a national or team meeting. Or if you're from a larger organization where many people would want to access the course, we can also make the course available for your use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless. Return on investment of your data purchase is paramount. For the millions of dollars some organizations spend on data, you want to know that the data is being optimized and maximized. Purchasing data gives your organization facts and data, but you shouldn't allocate your whole budget to data. By adding in software and reporting tools, you're providing them with information. Usually, this requires additional budget dollars to pay for the software and tools. For many organizations, the data and software comes with training, and unfortunately, many believe that training is enough to develop skills to properly use data, but it's not. You need to provide applicational training that will help your organization move from data to insights. And teach them how to then turn the insights into action. Not only category management needs to have these skills, sales, marketing, space management, and other departments require these analytic skills to make more strategic and fact based decisions in their roles. And to move to breakthrough insights, the right analysis at a much deeper level needs to be done. 
This is where the specialists do their work, where category management and shopper marketing can complete the in-depth analysis to find those breakthroughs. You do need to set aside part of your data budget to pay for the corresponding applicational training to increase capability on your team and in your organization ongoing. This will help you increase data return on investment and more importantly, move your organization to a more strategic and fact-based approach. At Category Management Knowledge Group, we can work with you to create solutions that will help you move your organization to a more strategic, fact-based place with increased return on investment for data purchased. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing the certified course or working with us to help you determine multifunctional training opportunities for your organization, that will ultimately lead to increased return on your data investment, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.